Do you ever stop and think about the importance of love and attention in your life? Maybe you do, or maybe it just sounds like a cliché. But do you ever stop and think about the importance of your love and your attention to those around you? Once upon a time, there was a girl. This girl was so lonely, so deprived of love, so deprived of attention, that she started to swallow things in order to feel the emptiness inside her. She swallowed everything she saw, everything she could reach, while no one was paying attention. And no one was paying attention all the time. Later, on the operating table, the surgeon took out of her stomach 25 slip soles, eight cloths, six socks, three parts of a sponge, three pieces of paper, three stones with a diameter of three to four centimeters. All that, weighing a total of four kilograms, but it was too late. This is how you die from lack of love and lack of care. And no one is held accountable. This is a real story. The name of this girl is Aneta. She was living in a Bulgarian institution for children with intellectual disabilities. According to a recent investigation done by the Bulgarian Helsinki Committee, where I work, for a period of 10 years, in Bulgarian institutions for children with intellectual disabilities, there were 238 children who died. And in two-thirds of these cases, these deaths were avoidable, meaning that these children died from malnutrition, from neglect, from cold. And no one is held accountable. And there's been no justice just like in the case of Valentin, a Romanian man who died in a psychiatric facility. He had HIV, he didn't receive his medication, he died alone in a cold room, and there is no one to sue on his behalf. NGOs are the only entities that can ensure that justice is done. And this is why we are asking the European Court of Human Rights to allow NGOs to bring cases on behalf of deceased victims to hold states accountable for abuse. I have been investigating the inhumane conditions in institutions for adults and children with intellectual and mental health disabilities for many years. These are places where people spend their entire lives. This is Romania. This is an institution which didn't have water, and the residents there, who I want to stress once again, spent their entire lives there, were having a bath once a month. This is Bulgaria. I don't know if you can see, but the spots on the blouse are flies. This is Croatia. This is Serbia. Again, for your information, the scarf, which is tied at the waist of the child, is used to tie this child to the bed. This is Macedonia. This is how an entire life can look like. But all these photos, in fact, could be from one country, called the country which couldn't care less where people are mistreated without repercussions, 
where they die anonymous deaths being refused rehabilitation. I want to make something clear. During my investigations, I have met many people who are really devoted to their work and their job. But I have also met many staff members who really believed that people with intellectual and mental health disabilities have no feelings, have no souls, are not people. Once I was walking down a corridor in this institution in Bulgaria, and I heard someone screaming, but I mean screaming, their lungs out. And I asked, what is, ha what is this, what is happening? And then a staff member told me, nothing. This is just crassy. She screams. This is like her thing. Now, when I go to these institutions, I try to distance myself from my feelings, which is a tough thing because I can't just spend one hour hugging a child, even though this is what I want to do, and this is what the child needs, because I have to see a hundred children. So I enter this room, and I see this blind, immobile child, which looks no longer than five years old, lying on a couch, screaming. And I make a few steps, and I say, hey, Krasi, and she stops. And then I make a few more steps. And I sit next to her on the couch. And I start gently stroking her head with my hand. And then she grabs my hand with both her hands. And she starts stroking her head with my hand. And she starts laughing. And I mean, laughing her lungs out. And this is where I spent 30 minutes sitting next to this child because I know what is going to happen. And it does. The moment I get up from this couch and I make a few steps towards the door, Krasi starts screaming. But screaming is not her thing of this blind, immobile child. Suffering is, loneliness is. Maybe if Krasi was able to get 25 slip soles, eight clothes, six socks, three parts of a sponge, three pieces of paper, three stones, she would have swallowed them in order to feel this emptiness inside her. But maybe it doesn't have to be like this. This, for example, is what proper care and love looks like. This is the same child, just one year and a half difference. This child had the incredible luck to be adopted. So maybe take a moment and think about the importance of your love and your attention to those around you but most of all, to the most vulnerable of all. And after taking this moment, think about the ways in which you can help, like inform yourself further and spread the word, or write to your governments, insisting to close down institutions and develop alternative types of care in the community or support your local NGOs in their efforts. But most of all, we can all make it happen if we really start thinking about people with intellectual and mental health disabilities as people with disabilities. People with disabilities. People. Thank you.